CFS, the Committee on World Food Security, is a platform, is a intergovernmental and multi-stakeholder global platform whereby committed stakeholders, governments, international organizations, civil society, the private sector, international institutions and others come together, discuss and come to common understanding and agreement and recommendations on very important issues concerning food security and nutrition. The CFS uh, is, as I said before, a platform which promotes policy coherence. What is policy coherence? Policy coherence is general guidelines where all stakeholders agree upon which then determine the course of action to be taken on important issues uh, on food security. Why is this important? Let me give you the example of the crisis of food in 2008 and 2009. At that time, the big problem that created actually the crisis was the lack of uh, coherence in policy and intervention, in that case, in the world markets. So CFS is trying to resolve these kinds of issues, to track a common approach, an agreed approach. That's the biggest contribution that the CFS has at global level, but also beyond global level. The fundamental change uh, in the CFS in 2009 is it actually uh, enhanced its multi-stakeholder character. So instead of having only governments talking among themselves, all the international, all the other players, very important players, uh, rising powers like the civil society, the private sector, and other organizations are now part of the debate. This is a major um, step forward in creating the consensus, which at the end of the day is at the basis of policy coherence. So this was a major step for the Committee on World Food Security. There were other changes. For instance, the role of uh, intercessional process was enhanced. Instead of having two meetings in a year, now the CFS works throughout the year through its bureau. The creation of the advisory group of non-countries, which advises the countries on important policy issues. So those are important changes, which they strengthen the character of the committee. Well, um, getting uh, agreement and consensus uh, up around issues when so many stakeholders come together is a challenge in itself, because various stakeholders come in with uh, different approaches on the issues, um, uh, different ideological positions on the issues, uh, different political positions on the issues. So the greatness of the CFS, uh, which is also its biggest challenge, is to bring all those and at the end of the day, come up with uh, negotiated and agreed upon uh, positions. Now, CFS is principally an intergovernmental body in the sense that the final decisions are made by governments. However, the role of the others, the other stakeholders, it's very, very important in the debate and the negotiation. So the big asset of the CFS, what offers to the world is also the biggest, its biggest challenge, promoting coherence and common position. The CFS um, has worked on uh, a lot of challenging issues, uh, which uh, at the end uh, arrived at common positions. The, um, I can mention some like uh, the price volatility, which was it's a very um, challenging issue to agree upon. The um, gender and nutrition, climate change, that was a major um, uh, challenge for the CFS to reach agreement because it's a very contested issue. Um, let me say that um, the issue of um, uh, biofuels, where different stakeholders have different interests uh, on biofuels. Uh, one of the key successes of 
the CFS is the uh, endorsement of the voluntary guidelines on the responsible tenure of land, fisheries, forests, and, nat and other natural resources in the context of national food security. That happened in May 2012, and now those guidelines are actually implemented. There is a lot of countries that ask the organizations that are competent in helping them out, especially FAO, to implement those guidelines. That's a major success. There are two other processes in the making, one on responsible agriculture investment, which is complementary to the voluntary guidelines, and one on agreeing on engagement in countries and contexts of protracted crisis. So I consider those very important challenges, but also very important successes.